Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Come have a drink. <laughs> Today, electric light is completely taken for granted, though without it our lives would be infinitely more difficult and dangerous. Creating all this light has taken an enormous amount of effort and ingenuity. In this programme, Rex and I are going to look at the evolution and workings of this almost indispensable invention. The first form of artificial light was obviously fire. Once the fire was burning well, you could take out a branch and use it as a primitive sort of torch. Trouble was, it tended to go out. Some countries had particularly resinous woods, like pitch pine, that burnt particularly well. Most countries developed some way of using oil or fat for light. The ancient Greeks and Romans squashed the oil out of olives, poured it into a bowl with um, some sort of a wick, soaked in oil. They then lit pretty puny flame. Oh no, it is just about a light. Northern European countries developed the candle. But these weren't like modern candles. They were made of animal fat. And they smelt pretty disgusting. And they tended to spit. And every few minutes you'd have to trim the wick. Meanwhile, whole animals and birds were used as candles in some parts of the world, particularly petrels. Here we have the early petrol lighter. Not so good as the candlefish. A little slippery, but very effective. As for me, boy, oh, I have a penguin to keep me warm. <laughs> Keeps a light for hours, weighs a ton, though. Oh, dear. These early candles provided so little light that most people went to bed soon after sunset. Try to get some sleep, put that bloody penguin out. Psychologists now believe that sleep evolved mainly to protect us from the dark. The possibility of using electricity for lighting was first suggested in 1810 by Humphrey Davy. Shorting out a large battery he'd been given, the electricity arced through the air, bridging the gap, almost like lightning. This intense light formed the basis of the first commercial arc lights in the 1840s. They needed to have quite an elaborate clockwork mechanism to move the electrodes progressively closer together because they gradually burnt away. Arc lamps continued to have specialist uses, like film lighting, until quite recently. However, the large amount of current used prevented them ever becoming widely adopted. Meanwhile, lighting had started to improve in the early 19th century with the introduction of gaslight. By 1850, it had been installed in most cities, although the search for a better electric light continued. Humphrey Davy had also noticed that electricity heats up any wire it's passing through to some extent, and that it was possible to make a wire glow white hot. We're using a welder as a power supply here, and uh, we should be able to turn out the lights and should give up enough. Only going at the bottom, but it should. That's it. But the problem is, at some point, it gets so hot that it starts to melt. Whoops. <laughs> However, well, we better have the lights back on, don't we? Yeah. Carbon melts at a much higher temperature than most sorts of metal and several inventors started experimenting with carbon filaments. Rex had this idea that we could uh, do this with a pencil, whoops, pencil lead that's uh, also made of graphite sort of carbon. So first we've got to burn off the wood round the lead. Well this works much better and the steel rod. But the trouble is that even the carbon filament doesn't last for very long because it reacts with the air 
and uh, slowly deteriorates. Get a little bit hot in that. The solution to this problem is to enclose the filament in a glass container and pump the air out so that it can't react with it. And that's the reason for the light bulb. Well, Rex and I have had some success making a light bulb like this, enclosing the pencil lid in a milk bottle. And uh, now we turn on the vacuum pump, start pumping out the air, and uh, connect it up. Yeah. If you okay. if we switch it on, why is the air pumped out? This is actually sucking more of the uh, any air that's trapped in the filament out as well. We should be able to. If you let go, you should be able to turn the light out. You should be able to make it work as a as a bulb now. Turn it up. Now. You can turn it up now. It's now it's working, can't we? Nearly as good as an ordinary light bulb, really. A chemist from Newcastle called Joseph Swan tried repeatedly to make a light bulb like this in the 1860s, but eventually gave up, concluding that his vacuum pump just wasn't good enough. Fifteen years later, discovering a better sort of pump, he tried again and succeeded in 1878. Meanwhile, Thomas Edison, here seen in his old age, had started experimenting in America in 1877. Backed by a lot of money and a dedicated team at his laboratory, he developed a similar light bulb within two years. Swan and Edison faced enormous difficulties even once their bulbs were working. There was no electricity to plug into at the time. Edison in particular had to dig up the roads to lay his cables and even built the first power stations to enable his lights to be used. Then, to persuade people to buy his electricity, he staged lots of publicity stunts, particularly with people wearing light bulbs in unusual places. The task of persuading people to install electricity wasn't made any easier because the original gas lights, just uh, a simple gas flames, had been dramatically improved in the 1870s with the invention of the gas mantle. This is made of a material that glows white hot at a particularly low temperature. If I light the whole thing up now, that it should all burst into light. I've got these two in my kitchen. I just like the soft greenish light they cast. They don't smoke or smell, and they're as bright as ordinary electric lights. Many houses didn't actually install electricity till the 1930s because their gas lights were so good. <laughs> Electricity finally triumphed because it could be used for so many other things besides lighting. Oh, bother. You know, there's only one plug in this room and we've already got the fire and the clock and the radio and the standard lamp connected to it. Now you want the table lamp for your sewing machine. Never mind, dear. We'll manage somehow. If father wants to play about at being an electrician, you mustn't begrudge him a little clean sun. The main improvement in an ordinary modern bulb is that it has a filament made of a metal called tungsten. It's easier to see in a clear bulb. This metal has the highest melting point of any metal. With tungsten filaments, our milk bottle lights work nearly as well as real light bulbs. In a real bulb, though, the tungsten is coiled.